So let's look at uh, chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. What does James chapter 2 say? What does it profit, my brethren? If someone says he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Now, a lot of us are guilty of this sometime or the other. Yes or no? Don't put up your hands. Oh, I, I just need help. Oh, yeah, I'll be praying for you. See, the word I'll be praying for you is one of the best sentences, most encouraging. But whether we do it or not, that's another thing. But uh, if you had something that you could do that can make the difference now, please don't just say, I'll pray about it. Because that is the very Christian thing to do. I'm just, I'm just saying, the, the very Christian thing to do may not be the very God thing to do. See, you see? I just, I'm, just, I'm just challenging that. Because sometimes Christianity can have so full of man's fingerprints, you need to get back to, let me just wipe it, okay? All I want to see is God's fingerprint. Okay, here we go. Man, Acts chapter 2, they sold all they had. Acts chapter 11, when the disciples were called Christians, they gave to the people who had famine. Acts chapter 4, you know, they, 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 had, they had everything in common. And you go, you go, uh, uh, chapter after chapter, uh, book after book, and you realize why they were called Christians in the first place. Because that is what Jesus would have done. Do you know that Jesus did not send people away after he preached because, uh, they would have fainted on the way. That's what the Bible said. So, he set all in that, them down, and he took five loaves and two fish from a boy who sacrificed it. And blessed it. And fed five thousand and more that very day. Because, this is who he is. He's not just a preacher. He's a lover of our soul. He's our father. He's our God. He's our best friend. That's why all these words, he will never leave us nor forsake us. It's not just words. No, it's, it's true. It's him. He cannot deny himself. He is faithful. Aren't you glad you're serving that kind of a God today? And he is real. He's awesome. He's good. We've tasted of him. And this is his fruit. And we bear that fruit. And people will see that we are Christians and followers of Jesus. Amen? So he goes on. Let me, let me read on. I, I've got to read this, you know. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, oh foolish man, ouch, that's painful, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works, faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness or for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works. Wow, so powerful. Huh? We don't hear this often. No? And not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I want to bring X church to that place, you know. If we're not already there, we should even, you know, go, f well, further, deeper, and desire more. Jesus even said, you no, know, if you give uh, uh, cold water or, or a cup of water to the, the least of this, just, just, uh, that means, uh, we, I think we've forgotten, maybe some of us, uh, the cup of water Christianity. And we're looking for the signs in the sky. Yeah. And we're looking for Jesus to come back now. You know, we're looking for some kind of a huge miracle, someone walking out of the wheelchair. But what God desires and glorifies God is a cup of water to the, to the person who's thirsty. And he's not even saying a cup of water to a millionaire who can give you back, no? He's saying to the least of this, yeah. and you will receive the reward. In fact, he says, uh, I assure you right now, your reward will by no means be lost. Is that good? Come back to that place where we know how to be human. And by being human, we do it unto the Lord. Because when you give, when you sow, when you encourage, when you love, you glorify God. Yeah. Acts chapter 6, what does it say? Oh, hey, it was when the seven was chosen. The seven was chosen. And it says in verse 3, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So, out of all the great qualities of a leader or a servant, what was quality number one? Find me someone with a good reputation. 
What is good reputation? Come on, friends. Good reputation can be seen by you hiding. See, uh, even before filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, before faith, before wisdom, uh, good reputation. No? You want to find a good leader? Don't, don't be over-spiritual about this. Come on, listen. This is the first quality, you know, that the apostles look at. Show me a man or a woman with good reputation. Meaning what? Everybody is saying something nice about him. Not because he paid them. He must have lived his life or her life to touch lives around. And therefore, the first quality of leadership is a person with good reputation. Think about that for a while. Not Bible school. Not how long you've been a Christian. Good reputation. And then full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, full of faith. Listen, are you a person with good reputation? Is X church a church with good reputation? Let's aspire to be that. Because that's the first of all qualities found in Acts 6. Listen, this is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. Because uh, you can, listen, uh, that, that also means uh, you can be full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, uh, listen, uh, full of wisdom uh, and not good reputation. Forget it. Forget the man with full of faith, full of Holy Spirit, full of wisdom, uh, but no reputation. <laughs> We're doing a Bible study right now. No? We're going deeper. I'm just, I'm just pulling out from scripture. So let's all aspire to have good reputation. Let's all aspire to have it in our workplace. You don't be the first one with the dirty jokes, okay? And when you are hearing something, you don't, you know, or, or somebody is saying something about, say, well, you know, I, sorry, uh, I, I won't join this gossip because, you know, talking about somebody that I don't think is fair to talk about because we don't even know him. I'll walk away. By that very walking away, they go, ah, square. They can say anything they want, nah, but that's Christian, no? And I'm telling you, uh, the very people uh, that sometimes they mock is the very people they go to uh, when they're in problem. Yeah. Why? Because all the other fellows laughed and all the other fellows joked and all the other fellows talked uh, dirty and all the other fellas, so basically, this guy knows when he's in trouble that they don't have any answer. Yeah. I said the fellow that walked away. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe he's different. So I want to say to you that friends, we are to have good reputation. How many of you know, next point, next point, next point, I want to rush through this now. Sheep and goats. The sheep and goats found in Matthew 25, they were divided by the Lord. The Lord came back, the master came back, divided the sheep, divided the goats. Now this sheep and goats uh, is not two different religion and two different uh, uh, races. They are all Christian, no? All Christian. And among the Christian, there are sheep and their goats. <gasps> Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, please don't be the goat. I see some of you don't even dare say that. Turn to your good friend and say, I hope you're not the goat, although you sound like one. I, 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 I hope. <laughs> no, don't be the goat, be the sheep. Okay? And the sheep are no, no letter S at the back, no? Just sheep and goats. Read your Bible. Sheep and goats. So he separated. Listen. What was the division based on? Are you sure? Maybe... The sheep prayed more. Are you, are you, you know, maybe the sheep has more wool, keep warm, warmth. No, 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 no. Very simple explanation, right? How simple? How simple? I was naked, you clothed me. I was hungry, you fed me. Well, I don't know the hungry part, thirsty, you, you gave me a drink. I was in prison and you visited me. The sheep said, when? Where? God la. When you visit the least of this, when you fed the least of this, when you clothe the least of this. Not directly to Him, indirectly to the needs around us where the Lord placed us. We opened our eyes. We were not inward looking, we were outward looking. You, you with me? Not exclusive, but inclusive. That ex church very reason for existence in Subang is for Subang and the world. And when we plant cyber, let cyber be taken care of by ex cyber. Nilai, Nilai be taken care of by. But let's begin to look out yeah. and hear. I love the part where this, uh, remember this guy, what's his name? Uh? Uh, uh, Bill Wilson. Bill Wilson was asked a question How do I know my calling? Bill Wilson said, When you hear a child crying by the lane, hungry, that's your calling. Huh? You mean I don't have to seek God for a calling from in the sky, written with a finger, uh, using the clouds? No. Oh, feed me, I 
I'm hungry. That's my calling. Some students not doing well in a particular poor flat. And if they don't have proper education, uh, it will just go. Poverty uh, is a cycle, you know. And we as a church must break that cycle. Yeah. And we must help teach these young people so that they can know maths, English, because nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares. So we go in there, not, see, uh, someone said before, if you, if you do anything uh, without the need for credit and glory, uh, you can do great things. The only reason why we don't go as far and, 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 and as deep as high is because people are always looking for credit, glory, front page on the, uh, front page, uh, 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 newspaper, uh, uh, article, uh, uh, feature, uh, or photo opportunity. Now, now we do get that as well, but we get that as a byproduct. Never as a, hey, please come and do it. Then I give it. No, listen, listen, listen. No, 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 no. That's why we go deep, we go far, and listen, I, I can stand here sounding like I'm bragging, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying, uh, let's go further. Let's do more. Let's go deeper. Ex church, the works of God must be seen. The light must shine. People must know the love of God. Without condition. So what if they never accept the Lord? Uh? What to do? It's the Lord who convicts people's hearts. We love them. We take care of them. So we go to two places to teach tuition for free. Our young working adults and some of our adults and some of our even teens go on a Saturday almost every week. Without fail, nobody paying them, nobody, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy to go week after week to teach kids, right, that you don't even know their future but you want to be a part of their future. Yeah. And so you say, I'm going, I'm going to give them a chance, at least a chance. Because if they can master something, then maybe, maybe they can master English. And one day get a good job. Please uh, start caring for the things that God cares about. And don't care about the things that God doesn't care about. I don't always become religious. Instead of relevant. And so this is the thing. Yeah. Okay, you want to celebrate my birthday? Why can't you celebrate my birthday uh, by caring for the people outside? Don't you think that will give God more glory? So uh, when it comes to Christmas, we don't just say, oh, where's my present? No. Where's the present that I can give to the people who who need it the most? So that when you take a bag of rice uh, to someone, and I'm telling you what, uh, stories after stories, we've got babies are being fed with Chinese tea, you know. Why? Because they can't afford milk. Now, what kind of Christmas is that? No, we be the Christmas. Yep. And we take milk and we take rice and, and some people, oh, yo, so much work like Christmas. No, lose the fun. No, I'm telling you, it's more fun. Yeah. It's more fun, more purpose. You know, more people involved. This is Christmas. Yeah. And Jesus will say, the least, you see? The least you did to, you did to me. So didn't we give him a present? Of course we gave him a present. We gave him rice. We gave him milk. And Jesus says, you've done to me. 